Hello and welcome to another Ambersat Basics video. Today we'll be taking a quick look at the Ambersat dashboard and go over how to code your flight code in order to communicate with said dashboard. By now you should have an understanding of how to compile and flash code. If not, please check out our previous basics video. But anyway, let's introduce you to the Ambersat dashboard. Heading to this address seen here, I'll leave a link in the description, you can use your username and password to log in, essentially turning any computer into your own mission control. You can see where all of your data feeds in here, the last gateway to receive a signal, and Ambersat news and such. But for now, how would you go about getting your device to communicate with the dashboard? Well, your satellite, when deployed into orbit with the swarm of other Ambersats, it will be working on the same frequency as all of the others around it. So we need to give it some unique identifiers so we can pick out your data from all of the noise amongst the swarm. Heading to the settings on your dashboard account, you'll see these unique identifiers that you'll need to add to your flight code. Now I have censored these values just in case somebody fancied tinkering with Ambassad 101, but this still shows you where to find your unique identifiers. So let's talk flight codes. Ambersat have a number of flight codes ready for use. You can find these in your Ambersat master folder, uh, in uh, release, source, uh, flight codes. Now, since I'm using sensor one, uh, I'll be using the SHT31 flight code. But the process of inputting your identifier keys is the same for each of our example flight codes. Once this workspace is open in Visual Studio Code, in the Explorer tab here, find the source drop down labeled SRC and select the main.cpp. Around about line 23 to 32, you will see where to input your unique identifiers. Let's start with the device address. From your dashboard settings, copy your device address and paste it here, being sure to only be replacing the values after the equals 0x. Now similar with the network session key and the app session key, taking care not to get any values in the wrong place, the values for these keys are broken up into pairs. Now this is just how I found works best for me. Uh, I suggest making use of Control X and Control V for each pair. With Control Z close to hand, you don't need to worry about making mistakes too much. Think of this like programming a digital SIM card into your device's code. Just because all of the other devices around it are using the same network doesn't mean we can't find ways to identify them individually. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Let me just speed this up for you guys. And if you want a trackpad like me, you might find swapping to the arrow keys just a little bit easier to get things in the right place. Now, once you're happy, and if you're anything like me and you've double, triple checked your values, like before, compile your flight code, check your wiring, and flash. Once you get a success, Go ahead and hit the terminal button and see what's going on. Now here you can see some of the raw data coming from your device. It's, it's good to check just to make sure everything's working. Looks like the temperature's right, looks like the humidity's about right. So it's a good indication that everything's set up correctly. Let's quickly cover LoRaWAN as this is what the Ambersat 1 uses for all of its communications. LoRaWAN stands for Low Power and Wide Area Network. This radio band has a long eye of sight range makes use of low amounts of power but what we get in range we lose a little bit in bandwidth. Um, when you think of bandwidth you'll likely think about your internet connection which deals with megabits, megabytes, uh, if you're in a really good area, uh, gigabits per second. Uh, lower transmissions work in bits. Tiny bits and pieces of data over long distances might not sound like much but for your sensor data that's all you will need to get your data from uh, lower orbit to our screen. So cool, we know what signals we are using for communications, but how do we receive them? Well, this is where the uh, Things Network comes into play. Uh, the Things Network is a massive community which has a global network of over 20,000 gateways just waiting to receive lower transmissions. Check out thethingsnetwork.org to learn more about gateways and such, uh, and check out this cool little globe here uh, for any oh oh it moves ah oh, that's cool anyway uh, check out this cool little globe for uh, gateway location information 
Like mentioned before, Loran has a very long eye of sight range. So if you're in a heavily built up area and you don't have access to an internal gateway, check out the Things Network website and find your nearest gateway. I'll leave a link in the description. Luckily, at the moment, there's no built up areas in orbit. So once launched, this won't be a problem. Want to see us make our own gateway? Let us know in the comment section below if you'd like to see that. So, with your device fully programmed, either attach your battery pack or if you're close enough to a gateway, you can get away with USB power from your FTDI. So, let's check the dashboard. Here we have where we can find our temperature and humidity values for Ampersat 101 coming in periodically. You can also see where the signal was last picked up. All these lovely stats that you can just lose yourself in. Uh, we can also even go for more options for the sensor data. It said uh, time and date filters and even export all of our lovely numbers into war data for use in Excel or whatever your master plans are for your space satellite data. And it's just that easy to flash, test and program on Ambersat 1 with example codes. Please feel free to tinker away with them, try out some of our other example codes, or if you're really up for a challenge and want to start dabbling in the dark ah, arts of C++, then please script your own and let us know how you get on. And as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content. If you want any further information on Ambersat, check out ambersat.com.